thing is I got to come up here with my family from Florida. Um, I brought the warm weather with me because I know it had been cold here. So uh, I thought, you know, I don't like the cold weather, so why don't I bring some of that? But, yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling anytime, you know, you get recognized in a, in a, in a place where you grew up playing. And uh, I'm, Anthony is a guy that I actually, Tolliver, I played basketball with growing up. So uh, it's, it's really cool to get to go in with him as well. Uh, let's touch on your uh, high school years at Ozark. Uh, growing up, did you imagine that you'd get drafted out of high school? Um, I wasn't. I wasn't sure when I was younger. I knew I always wanted to, and I, that's you know I wanted to be a professional baseball player. But at the end of the day, it was one of those things where you know there's the minor leagues, there's college, there's some steps you got to take. So when when it came to like my junior year going into my senior year, I'd had a big summer playing summer travel ball, and I knew that there was a chance I could get drafted, but I didn't know exactly what it would be until we had draft day. And then when I got that call from the White Sox, it was a it was an awesome experience too. And I'm curious, did you grow up a Royals, Cardinals fan? What was your take um, on it? I was a Royals guy. I, George Brett was my favorite player. I played third base, shortstop, and he was a left-handed hitter. I was a left-handed hitter, so I thought I was going to be the next George Brett. But it turns out I threw the ball hard, so I, they made me into a pitcher. So what was that like to play again or play for the White Sox? I know the Royals and the White Sox usually don't mesh too well. Um, yeah, that's a, obviously there's a rivalry there, which was kind of cool because uh, some of the guys that were there with the Royals when we played them, you know, I played a lot against in the minor leagues. So um, getting to play there and come and go to Kaufman and stuff like that, it was a great experience. And you spent your time with many organizations. Is there one that really stood out to you? Um, when I went from Atlanta to, uh, in 2016, I was with Atlanta and then I went to, um, the Rangers for the playoffs and, uh, both those organizations are really ran in a really first class way. It's a very professional, it's about winning. And, um, so I would say probably th that year, not only cause I also had a pretty good year, but it was one of those things to where it was, it was just a, the whole feeling and the atmosphere of the organization and the team, the guys I played with, it was really good. And uh, you're the king of strikeouts. Uh, I believe with the Astros, you were like the, they called you the supreme sinker ball. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, why did that title come about and how did you just get to that point where you're striking out guys left and right? Um, for me, with the sinker, it was one of those pitches that, uh, I, it was one of my natural pitches. So as I got drafted and I started working with the, pitching coaches in the organization through the White Sox they really helped develop that to where it was a power sinker and I threw really hard so it was it, you know when you can get a lot of ground balls and you can get a lot of swing and misses with it with one pitch it makes it a little bit easier especially if your other pitches haven't developed yet because I kind of took me a while to develop my curveball I had a good change up and then I be, finally became a plus pitch as I got older but um, for me it was more like I was a cutter sinker guy for most of my career. Now since you grew up playing basketball with Anthony how many years did you guys play basketball together? Um, so my mom found some pictures of us with the Mavericks when I was like, I think I was like eight or nine. So we played together. And then um, I think we played two years together. And then we played against each other a lot after that because he was on those really good teams with, when we were younger with Spencer Laurie, Devin Mitchell, um, Brandon Pemberton, and some guys like that that are all local guys. I actually played high school with Brandon Pemberton at, at Ozark <clears throat> when I moved. So. All right, so playing against him in high school, right? Obviously, growing up, you guys were both fierce competitors, good athletes. But did you know early on playing basketball against him that he had the juice, like he could make it? Oh, he was a very special player. Not only was he 6'8", six, 6'9", six, but he could shoot. He had soft touch. He had really good hands. He could catch the ball. And, you know, one of the biggest things as a competitor against him, I wanted to make sure he never dunked on us. So <laughs> I, 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 one of the things about high school basketball, I didn't like getting dunked on. So I would try it all at at, at anything to, to not let that happen. Now, since you guys are both from the area, right, you guys both went professional, you guys are both now going in this Hall of Fame together, I guess why is this a great lesson or a mantra for any people or anybody that wants to say, hey, I'm from a small town, I can't have big dreams. Why are you guys living proof that big dreams come from anywhere? Um, I think it's a testament to my parents for me, and I know uh, Anthony's mom was, you know, she was a real sweet lady, and the fact is is that I think when you have someone behind you supporting you and telling you, like, hey, chase your dreams, you know, you, you might have big dreams or something that you think that, you know, like you said, being from a small town, it's not possible, but the fact is is that if you will work hard at it and you will, you'll focus and you'll not let all the outside Side distractions, you know, you can do you can do great things. I guess can you elaborate though on that? Right, a lot of kids today, right? They want to focus on the material and the highlights and all this stuff. 
but why is it that you have to embrace the grind of wanting to be better and not just the outcome of what of what that product is? Well, because that's the fun. The journey of it is the fun part. You know, going to the gym, uh, going going out and taking ground balls, uh, working on watching video breakdown. Like one of the best things for my career was when I got hurt in 2014, and then I went to Korea because I kind of got my mechanics kind of got out of whack and so what I did was I started breaking down old video and I just I spent hours and hours and hours just watching my own video and I would do overlays with on my computer out of program and I would figure out where I was you know not as sharp so I, I learned about how to coach myself and it, it actually helped me with my teammates you know when I would see something or that we talk about pitching or whatever so that that the want to learn your body and, and figure out what I got to do to get to that next level to, to, to stay at that level because I mean getting there is the hard, it's hard but staying there is even harder. Can we touch on you're talking about technology and technology is a big deal in baseball um, we see how much it's advanced they're using VR now and everything how do you feel about it? Do you think that is improving the game? Um, I think there's some aspects of it are good and some aren't. I think it's more, uh, instead of trying to teach someone how to pitch through the technology and some of the things they're doing now, I think it should be more of a, like, it's a reference sheet. You know, you, you video yourself, you go back to it, and then you see what the numbers are because, you know, they do the spin rates, they do the exit velo and all that stuff. Well, I don't, I, when Mike Trout hit a home run off me before, when he hit it, I don't think he was like, that was 101 off the bat. He was like, no, that's a, that's a home run. He didn't care. You know, so, like, I think that's where some of the things, there's a little bit of disconnect. I have some old school th thoughts on it, and I also have some new school stuff. Um, I think that, you know, saying hey how am I hitting the ball so you know your exit velo but that's not like for an end game or that's not like saying hey you got to do this to get the exit velo I think it's more like hey you need to do this to get hitting correctly and then the exit velo will come with it. Can you talk to me about I guess what it means to be a professional right in all sense besides the grind besides playing but also being attitude and how you treat people is that is that important as well? For sure and especially taking care of your body I mean you know I, I always tell people the two bigger the two things you can control completely is what you put in your body and like like you just said how you treat other people around you you know being being friendly and outgoing you know you can keep yourself in the fans good graces you can stay around longer I think I, I did pretty well with the fans and I think that's probably why I stuck around a little longer than I should have uh, my last few years were they, were they were good but I you know I wasn't as who I was before I was kind of I, I basically got hurt at the end so